All right, we are back uh, for week three, actually, of the podcast, uh, WPL Podcast. Uh, welcome back, Jay. Yeah, it's uh, week one's in the books. Finally got to see some action. <laughs> it was honestly, man, that was actually one of the better week ones we've had. That was insane. I don't know if it was because the fact that we've been without Pokemon for a little while and no one's been playing. Yeah. And we're just like thankful to have anything or if <laughs> the week actually was nuts. Um, I think it's nuts. I think it was nuts too. I think I think the league is getting very competitive, very very competitive. It's not good. It's not. It's good, but it's not good because <laughs> yeah. now I have to try harder. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Oh my god! No, congrats to everybody that won week one. Uh, week week uh, people that lost. Don't worry about it. It's a long season. It's not really a long season. It's only yeah. eight weeks. Uh, you literally lost <laughs> one eighth of your games. Um, no, but yeah, uh, no, it's. Uh, I think every week it's like the NFL, right? The NFL in, uh, in North America. Like there's only sixteen or seventeen games. I forget how it is. One week could make or break your season. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, with only eight weeks in the season, it, uh, I think it's just a, a massive, massive deal. That's why everyone's so freaking stressed. Holy crap, I was stressed <laughs> this week. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you know, especially if you, if you lose two games at the beginning of the season, it gets really hard to make the playoffs. So, yeah, anybody who has, uh, you know, and speaking as one of them who, who lost week one, uh, I, you know, you, you got you to gotta really start figuring out how you're going to bounce back because the season can get away from you pretty quick. Well, let me encourage you for a second, Jay. Let me encourage you. <laughs> Let's take a trip down memory lane. Thanks. Last season, yeah. Vitor lost uh-huh. week one and week two, That's made right. it to the finals. That's true. Season two, you lost week one, two, yeah. and three, yeah, made the playoffs, made true. the finals. <laughs> so yes. to all of you listening right now who are crying, who are very – no, you're not crying. You're just upset. <laughs> I hate losing. I hate losing too. I that just was last kinda, week. I got lucky this week. <laughs> Um, no, yeah, that was last week. <laughs> the crying time is over. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm, no, in, like, honestly, I'm stage, guys, stage four of grief right now. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> there, there is a stage of being upset after a loss and I've been uh, there. Um, but, uh, no, man, like it's, it's it, just think like it, four and four teams make the playoffs sometimes, uh, five and three teams make the playoffs almost yep. actually all the time. I actually don't all think we've had a five and three that didn't make it. I so, uh, Get yourself that fifth win, and you've got eight weeks to do it. So you lost week one, so what? Just bounce back. Bounce back, yep. And and keep that in mind, too. Um, Everyone's still getting used to their teams. We're going to touch on that a little bit in the recaps. Right. And also the previews as well, but everyone's still kind of getting used to their teams. Uh, some kind already have a whole, uh, handle on it. You you could tell a couple of the teams played really, really well, and a couple of teams that feel like they just couldn't get it started, uh, which, again, we'll touch on. But, uh, yeah, let's – um. So for this podcast, we're going to do – this is kind of like a standard podcast that we're going to do most weeks. Uh, we've been kind of like easy flow in whatever the first two that we did because one was a post-draft. One was match preview. With no oh, – was it – yeah, we well, there, was, there was we no did... games to, to <laughs> guys, re- review. We, had, we didn't even know what we were doing. We just kind of went with it. <laughs> and you guys loved it. So hopefully you guys yeah. like this. It's going to be a little more structured because we, uh, we don't want to spend too long on the intro like we are. But Already? Yeah. um <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm not even looking at the time. Um but we should be. But um so what we want to touch on, we want to go on recaps. Uh we want to touch on each of the games just to kind of let you guys know cuz in case you didn't have a chance to watch all the matches, uh that's what we're here for. We're going to give you very very basic uh runovers and significant events of what happened in each game. Um and then what we're going to do, uh we're going to go over the standings, see where everything sits right now. Then we're going to get into week 2 and talk about the match previews again and uh, yeah, we got our pickums again. Don't forget our pickums. Uh, some people won, some people did, lost did. last week uh, for the pickums. We won't <laughs> talk about which Jason won, and lost, but uh, it was definitely a thing. Um, yeah, and, and just little things like we're gonna end off with uh, with our WPL Academy segment segment as well because that's uh, we're gonna see how it goes. We're gonna keep doing it and see if uh, anybody learns right. a little bit and uh, hopefully it makes everybody a better player. So, um, what's the first match you want to talk about, Jay? For um, Pick anyone. Pick any match, even if there's one you want to get out of the way. I don't even care. Uh, well, I guess we should probably uh, start with the game of the week last week. Um, That's a good point. That uh, and I will. I will let you handle this one. <laughs> I'm gonna go cry in the corner for a minute. I'll be right back. Okay. So, <laughs> it, okay. Before this match started, you guys have been going toe to toe ever since you've been playing, like since season two, and it's been awesome. Uh, fireworks have been going off, and it's just been really, really good matches. I was expecting the same. I just, I don't know what happened. Sometimes a plan just does not come together for whatever reason, or better yet, your opponent just 
preps really well and just kind of finds a way uh, to get it done. And I feel like that's what happened in, in week one versus you. I think v so just in case anybody didn't know, uh, Vitor won the best of three to nothing. Um, he won 2-0 game one, 4-0 game two. Uh, that very, very, very valuable 4-0. He got it nice and early this season, so that tiebreaker could make a huge difference for his seeding at the end if he does make it. Um, who are we kidding? It's Vitor. He's going to make it. <laughs> he, he's not going to need 4-0 wins. <laughs> but yeah, so anybody who didn't watch, um, I feel like Vitor really, really needed this win. Um, just, I, I feel like you, Cascade, have been the thorn in his side because he's kind of played really well against pretty much everybody. Um, but you've just kind of been, like I said, that thorn in his side. Um, you know, do you have any takes on week one at all, or just kind of forget about it, and move on? Uh, I think I think week week one shows the importance of prep. I think I think he had he had me beat before the game even started. Um, it his feels prep, that his way. His prep was his prep was just it was amazing, and it 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 was way better than mine, and it very well showed on on you know, in the match. So I think that was the biggest takeaway. There. I mean, obviously I'm not trying to take away anything mid game, obviously he played well too, but I, he, his prep was just on point and destroyed mine. So. Yeah. Like when, when somebody throws a scarf on a Pokemon, it's really hard to, you can't really prep for everything to have a scarf, I guess you can do one plus one calcs and stuff like that for speed and, uh, and things like that. But, um, yeah, when you've got a speed strat like you had, uh, just in case anybody didn't watch, Cascade's strat primarily was, he had other ones, but primarily his strat was um, Mega Manectric with uh, a really, really fast discharge uh, next to his um, Electivire that had Motor Drive, giving it the plus one speed. Dynamax turn one, Vitor just kind of neutered it with a minus one attack. Um, he had Scarf, which just outsped the Manectric, so he got it off before it happened. And an early Dynamax with... Uh, with that uh, breaking swipe lowering its attack kind of settled it there um yeah. and it just kind of went the same in game two i think you changed it up game two uh did you uh, i did uh, i went to go for more of a trick room mode but um the problem is is my my trevenant was specced for a physical t-tar and uh well obviously it was a special t-tar and kind of destroyed <laughs> my whole team just ran through my whole team he got the he he got the weakness policy off and uh, pretty much just won with four hits from there, I think. <laughs> well, yeah, T-Tar is just, is just so devastating, especially once it gets a weakness policy activation. So, uh, so yeah, um, five, and oh, five, win, five kills, no deaths uh, for T-Tar. Uh, we had a few of those this week, but uh, that definitely led to, um, to his victory there. We, we won't spend too much time on the match uh, as we're going to not spend too much time on all of them. But um, yeah, that's so just in case, have a watch, you know, uh, check it out. They were really, really good matches um, all around. So uh, not just so much this match, but all of them they were all really, really good. Um, but you know what? We got yours out of the way. Let's get mine out of the way so we can really get into it. Um, uh, Jay, I'll, I did yours. You do mine. That's right. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you came in, uh, had one to shake the rest off and you did just that. Um, got a 2-0 got a win, um, a 2-0 match win with games 3-0 uh, and 1-0. Um, I think the story of this one was uh, was was reads and uh, and switches. Um, that meg that Metagross uh, always had a knack for coming in <laughs> at the wrong time. Uh, that you, poor Metagross. You just you happen to you happen to be able to obliterate it every time it hit the field, and it wasn't able to do anything, um, which definitely let your Glacier go off because that was a big counter for your Glacier, and the fact that you were able to to deal with that uh, without even getting an attack off was was just it was huge. Um, I will say that uh, game two when Heracross uh, got that, uh, yo, that boost, thing, and uh, then the sash uh, when you know Mimikyu went into it, but it was sashed. It, it was it was looking scary for you there for a bit, but um, dude, I don't think I've spent that much time on a on a screen. I I don't think it took like a crazy amount of time waiting, but like normally I lock my moves in in like maybe fifteen seconds, maybe max, maybe ten seconds. I usually think about it and then I make my decision. That one, once that. It's just so everybody doesn't know, um, in case the people don't know, I um, what happened game one is it went really well. Trick Room went up, and the rest is history. Um, actually, Trick Room didn't go up game one. Never mind. No, that was um, game two. <laughs> that was game two. So Trick Room did go up, but Meowstic died turn one to yep. a uh, Heracross uh, Megahorn. And 
I actually didn't do much prep against Heracross, and I got a plus one with Moxie, and in the, I set Trick Room, and I've got Glacier in the back, which was actually not super strong against Heracross. Yeah. And so I brought an Entei, and everyone was asking me, why are you bringing in a Scarf Entei in Trick Room? I'm like, well, it needs to die. So <laughs> and then, I, I threw it out there, it died, and I'm like, thank you very much. I salute you. Um and uh, no, it just kind of—I kind of grinded my way back into the game. So uh, that hair cross was definitely a, a sneaky thing that I think he brought. And uh, but that's the thing about draft league, right? You bring something that you're not expecting, and hey, element of surprise yep. is huge. It's huge, huge, huge. Um, speaking of uh, things that are huge, and actually in this case not huge, is megas really didn't come into play um, at all in this one. I think in part because that metagross kept getting you know, smash as soon as it came on, but like you didn't even bring your mega. So um, this was definitely no. a straight up fight with, with, without megas coming into play really at all. Yeah. We've actually got an interesting stat at the end that will bring up uh, megas, their impact on the league. I think that's what everybody was asking about and curious about even now. Um, I've actually got an interesting week one stat. Um, actually, I'll just say it now. Why not? Why am I waiting? Um, <laughs> all megas. Um, I think I looked, and I think 10 Megas made an appearance. I could be wrong. 10, 9, or 11, one of the in and around that range out of the 16 made an appearance. 8 kills, 16 deaths. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> we had about 10 Megas die 16 times and only got 8 kills. So, I don't know if everybody was running support Megas that week or this week. But, um, yeah, like, I knew they wouldn't be massive, but maybe people are kind of still getting the feel on them. It's just like, hey, I have to bring it because it's my Mega. Also, it's been a long time since people have used Megas, um, if at all. I mean, I, I, I've never used Megas. I, I wasn't playing any kind of competitive when Megas were a thing. So, um, yeah. Yeah. People are still getting used to them. Hey, uh, well, I think, yeah. I just say, um, you've always been begging somebody to run special Metagross. <laughs> hey he did it man he did hey, it i should i should tell my opponent to do something that would really help me every single week and they'll do it <laughs> and i'll have an advantage because uh, i was i was just joking around. i was just like hey you need to run special metagross and he actually expanding force uh week one so that was actually kind of neat so um but yeah um but yeah again like i said i didn't want to spend too much time on each match because yeah. this podcast could kind of get out of hand uh ah, nobody cares just play it on <laughs> 1.5 speed everybody that's right. <laughs> Played on one point five speed, and then, and we could talk really, really fast, and then, and then you can't listen to anything. Um, <laughs> okay, so the next match um, we wanted to get into was Spider Phantom Troop versus Florida for Alligators. Um, first of all, Octo won in the best of three, two zero. Very close game one. Um, yes. Close game two as well, but I feel like Octo, uh, like the score was kind of misleading. I don't feel like he, sorry, Spider Phantom Troop is Octo, so I'm going to reference in case people don't know. Um, I feel like Octo. Was in control most of that game too, and uh, he ended up winning 2-0. But I feel like uh, it's, it was just a little bit more commanding than a 2-0-1 shows, a uh, 2-0 win shows. Uh, but yeah. man, was that we that, that game that one first that was game, that game one was insane. Yeah, single game of the season so far. As for just on the edge of my chair, like we had <laughs> Colossal with Aqua Jet, um, Dragonite in the in the match. Um, yeah, we just we had Cottony. We saw Dynamax. The Dynamax Cottony actually won. Dynamax Cottony. That's right. Yeah, that was that was nuts. I mean, Whooper. What? <laughs> yeah. Who's Whooper? Yeah. Who's, no. who's Cottony. Whooper? Yeah, Cottony is definitely a mod that I would not have picked. Was going to get any Dynamaxes through the whole season. <laughs> and so like yeah. game one, week one of the uh, hot take, boys product. and girls. Hot take. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, no, but I think uh, that was another. This is another game that uh, a hard switch into Colossal, trying to get the uh, Aqua Jet oh, yeah. off, um, and just uh, Octo happened to go in into low kick there, really changed the tide of that game one battle. Oh man, yeah, I've I've tried doing that before. I've tried switching in and trying to activate a policy without the max. The the reason that it's so successful in in this gen. Uh, is because Dynamax, Dynamax doubling your HP and now attacking your partner only does half of what it normally would do. So, mm -hmm. um, so it's always risky to switch and activate a policy. Like it better be pretty darn insignificant and not expecting any damage whatsoever on one side of the field for you to make it happen. Um, it, it's never worked out for me, and we did we see it nope. didn't quite work <laughs> out this week. Um, low kick didn't help either, but no, very very good prep. Like we were talking before as well, Octo prepped really really well. Um, for, uh, for yeah. that match as well. And, I mean, Octo showed off the power of uh, Prankster Encore right there. Um, that game was was a clinic in that sense. Just basically shutting down an opponent's Pokemon for 
the foreseeable future, basically the rest of the match. Um, be, you know, when you turn when you turn a match into a two v one, it's it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna go well for your opponent. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. One of the so, um one of the big factors I thought was gonna be was uh, ice and hail with the Arctivish on uh, Florida side, and I feel like Cottony just kind of encored it. Right, I think I can't. It came in. I think it had a bad matchup in the moment, and it protected, and then Cottony just encores and. I think it did it twice or three times. And, you know, Encore is one of those things that doesn't like end. It's not like Confusion where it could end, you know, at any time. And, you know, it's literally snaps three turns. Out it. it's, it's three turns and then it goes away. And then, and then they it can comes just, right back. <laughs> then they can just Encore you again uh, right away. So Exactly. Yeah, yeah no, that, that was really good. Uh, a really, really good match to watch. I think that um, both players played really well in that first game. Man, I thought that first game was in the books early. And... I don't yeah. know if Octo kind of made mistakes or whatever it might be. I think uh, he could have Dynamax a little earlier, which led to Florida coming back in the match, or yeah. if or if Florida just played incredibly well. I think that sometimes if if you let your opponent back into the game, good players will capitalize on that, and right. I feel like B Rich did that, and he almost pulled off he the win, man. Like, it. yep, Akatni. I think his only move That's was uh, Endeavor. Yeah. Uh, so the max max strike. Like he needed it there, but yeah, how many yeah, people would have done that? Like, <laughs> or even thought about that? No. He thought of doing it's it. Crazy. It's just like I have no moves. It's like no endeavor is actually an attack technically. Yeah, that's right. Or is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is because it does damage in the max. No, that that was a really cool match. Um, but uh, let's go to um, Kyogre versus Great Marsh. Oh, wow, fantastic match. This was, yeah. Let's go. I don't even know. Um, yeah, I don't even, like, there's just so much on this one. Well, let's just let's just say what happened. So, um, Kyogre versus Great Marsh. Great Marsh won two one in the best of three, two games to one. Uh, Great Marsh won game one three zero, lost game two zero one, and then grinded out a game three one zero, which could have gone either way. And I think we even said that last podcast, saying that I think either player could win, and yeah. it was really down to the wire where you just flip a coin. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, uh, very chess match, like very, very chess match. It was. There's a lot of good, um, you know, just trying both players trying to fight for board position. And uh, I mean, the fact That's that what, yeah, you know, the right. last the last two games were, I mean, one oh one oh's both times like and, and they weren't like cheap one oh's like you mentioned earlier, how sometimes it, it says one oh, but really one person, you know, was way up. No, no, those both of those matches came down to the wire. Uh, yeah, especially that game three too. Like I feel like um, in game three, like I, I remember there was a couple of apo- there were a couple of apologies going back and forth in the uh, <laughs> in the chat from Great Marsh. It was just like a flinch, and then there was like I think it might have been game one, two, or three where it was like Trick Room was going to go up. It was a perfect setup and a rock side flinch. It just kind of really messed really things messed up. up. Um, and, and then even at the end where it was just like I With think there bo- was a- body press was the only move left on into a ghost. Ghost yeah. Road, like that was. That nice was set rough. on the bronze song. Oh, seriously, that that that's a really devastating set with body press and trick room and imprison things like that. And, it was. Um, I mean, obviously, I mean, we say nice set, but also it's somewhat the reason that you know they had no moves for that Rotom, which ended up being his downfall. But it was a really cool bronze yep. song set, and uh, yeah. Yeah, that, I think I think um, that was a very very good. I don't think um, there was any Pokemon on the on that roster on both sides of the field. Uh, not roster, but the six that they brought. That um, yeah, they were all just every single move made sense. You know, I felt like it was really really good prep by both players. And when you have that two good players with both really good prep, you're gonna get a nail biter like you got. So uh, yeah, okay. so very very cool. Well, actually, one of the reasons why I feel like Week One was so great was this match. Yeah, um, it was just on the edge of the, our chairs. It was- um, the best match to watch by far. Yeah, I. Uh, it's kind of hard to pick a favorite when you like most of them, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, but actually, one of the earlier matches. This actually might have been the first match of the season. Uh, Cyanwood versus yeah, Cyanwood Cyndaquils versus Seattle Sigilyphs. Uh, we finally got to see that uh, Venusaur Charizard, but we actually didn't really see it. No, it didn't even come uh, game one. Um, which uh, I remember we were talking after that match that I. When I saw that game one, I was immediately far more scared of Seattle Sigilis team. The fact that he came yes. out in game one of the season, like he has this ultimate combo, and game one of the season, he's just like, I'm not even going to use it. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, um, that that tells me that you know he's somebody that we're going to be watching out for. I think throughout the season. Um, yeah, and, and I guess we didn't really mention it. Uh, this was a two zero win for Seattle, um, winning both games two zero. Uh, I believe that the second game actually was it was in the, it was one of those games that was closer than the than the scorecard showed. Um, well, there was one of the two games that Seinwald played. He just played incredibly well. I felt like yeah. he was he played well enough to win, and I I don't even know if he misplayed to get the loss. I. I just remember it was it was really nice to see because last season this is kind of he's building on last season because he, he finished near the the lower end of the standings, so it was really really nice to see um, uh, a good showing. I actually thought yeah. uh, Seattle has a really good team and he's a really good player, um, but I feel like Sy- I'm kind of watching Sinewood to kind of see his development and I definitely saw a step forward in this matchup. So I'm looking forward to seeing weeks two and on actually. Yeah. Um, but uh, specifically in this match, uh, like you mentioned the what he didn't bring. Let's mention what he did bring. Um, Garchomp Musharna was yeah. actually a really neat. Um, Musharna got two kills, man. Um, yeah, it man. just kind of picked off things. Um, a lot of people run Musharna with no attacks because it's just so good at supporting, and it's kind yeah. of bulky. And like you run like Trick Room and Prison, you run uh, Helping Hand, Yawn. All it gets all those really really nice yep. uh, support. Ally moves. switch. Ally. Everybody's, everybody's um, favorite move. <laughs> that is not going to be the WPL. Um, <laughs> What's it called? Uh, WPL friggin' Academy at the end about Ally Switch. We're just going to pretend like it doesn't exist, as all of you should do when you're playing against Ally Switch. Especially if you haven't seen it yet. Especially if you haven't seen it yet. Oh, yeah. Don't predict it. It never works out. (laughs) Unless you know the person personally like you do, Jay, when you face me, and you're like, I know this this stupid guy's (laughs) Ally Switch here. (laughs) I can see it written all over his face. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, no, you've read a couple of ally switches in in our day. So, uh, no, that that was just a really cool match. Um, Seattle versus no, not Seattle versus uh, Seattle versus yeah. Ca- uh, Cyan. Cyan would. <laughs> yeah, a couple surprises. Um, no intimidate on the Mawile. I think that I thought that was a uh, was an interesting thing. But his his reasoning was he didn't want to get intimidated. Um, uh, from the yeah. uh, who did he For, have? Uh, I forget what Seattle has that had intimidate. Oh, um, this is bad. We Nobody listen this. right now. I, I should know this. I absolutely should. Yep. You should, no, you the, should uh, fill in the space while I'm looking hyper, it up. Uh, but no, hyper cutter on Mega Wild. Um, he mentioned, oh, Hitmon Top. Uh, oh, there you go. Hitmon Top. Yeah, the Hitmon um, Top. Yeah, so I, he had you know sound reasoning um, for bringing a hyper cutter there. You know, I mean, it wasn't... Uh, I definitely wouldn't say it was a mistake, um, but it was no. definitely a surprise. It, it's, it's definitely one of those that I would have always just assumed it had Intimidate. So the fact that it didn't was like, oh, yeah, that's right. I, in fact, I, even, I remember asking him after that match. I was like, what is Maul Wiles other ability? Because <laughs> I couldn't remember off the top of my head, and I was uh, I was out and about. And uh, I was like, okay. And he kind of explained it. And I was like, okay, that, that, that makes total sense. Yeah. You sold me. <laughs> it, and you know what? Sometimes those decisions, too, they they really pay off. Like, sometimes when you go up, go against uh, the grain, like, for example, Seattle versus – like, uh, in his not using uh, Venusard, whatever it is, uh, Venus or Charizard. Yeah. Um, that was a risk not using his, uh, his best foot forward, right? And it paid off, right? So sometimes yeah. going against the grain does pay off, and uh, sometimes you take a stab and it doesn't. Yeah. Um, so not having the intimidate, I do think would have really helped against that uh, that Garchomp, um, especially because Garchomp just did so well that match as well. Yeah. So, um, so but it, but in the end, hey, you know you got to try some stuff. That's what draft league is all about. So uh, we have some fun yep. and uh, being unexpected definitely wins you games. That's for sure. Uh, but let's go on to um, actually our two favorite teams were kind of going off um, uh, going week one. Uh, Sviel of Oricalcos versus Texas Land Sharks. Um, I really liked Sfeel's, Sfeel of Oikalkos' roster, and you really liked Texas's <laughs> roster. And as I a know. result, Texas won 2-1 in the best of three, lost game yes. one against Sfeel, and then won 3-0, 3-0 from the unstoppable train that is Drew <laughs> Um So, uh, Jay, what was your take on this match? I mean, it was just a great bounce back uh, from Texas. You know, losing, you know, losing game one you know, always puts you on in the – you know, you always start getting nervous. Oh you start second guessing yourself. Yep. You start saying, you know, well, man, I got to really bring this back. I got to do something crazy. And, and Texas just settled in and said, I'm sick and, you know, I, I'm going with maybe, you know, plan B and plan B was, was excellent. And I think, um, you know, that's, that's another thing is having that plan B to fall back on. And in this case, it was, it was a great one. 
um, came back and, and, and I mean, I, again, I think uh, the, the games, there was, there was definitely those two matches had, or those two last two games had times within the game where it was like, this still could go either way. Um, obviously mm-hmm. it fell, you know, three Oh three Oh to Texas, but you know, I, bouncing back, I mean, it, it's hard to lose game one and keep your focus. And he definitely, he definitely did that. Yeah, and a really versatile team, too, for Texas as well. He had a couple different ways of getting that Dragalgy to kind of get set up, right? Like, if you see one Pokemon on your team that kind of just runs through the other, um, multiple ways of setting it up is really, really nice. So the weakness policy on the Dragalgy, was it It was policy, right? Weakness policy? Uh, I don't even know if it was, actually. I think it was. It got yeah, some boost. It, was, it, it was getting the boost with the max oozes. The max ooze, yeah. It was getting off uh, with the, the max ooze. But it's funny because Dragalgy is his name written all over this match because game one, Dragalgy was neutralized um, with its special attack not getting any higher than it already was originally um, with things like Spirit Break and things like that. And I, I Ant-Man got up screens um, yep. to kind of stop that Dragalgy from going off. But then game two, so he tried the trick room mode didn't work great you know whatever he lost 2-0 not a big deal i'm just going to use the speed swap alakazam make it faster than anything and the rest is history and and like you said before you lose game one sometimes you just okay he beat me this way i have to stop it how do i do it meanwhile you've already got another strategy ready to go and you over adjust and things like that but um yeah i just feel like uh, it was a really really good adjustment by texas um he kind of had that alakazam with speed swap in my opinion, the best um, mega of the week, actually. Yeah, yeah, like you said, megas. Yeah, megas didn't have a huge impact this week, but Mega Alexander was definitely the exception to that rule. Um, yeah, put in work. Yeah, especially Dynamaxing early too. I feel like um, Texas Dynamaxed really early uh, game one against the Grim Snarl in ways that can kind of stop it, and uh, and Ant Man took over uh, late with a late Dynamax and just kind of went off. Um, but um, <laughs> one, one, one cool thing actually really was neat. Um, I didn't know this. Wandering Spirit is an indiv- it's a unique ability for uh, Renarigus. And it's kind of like Mummy with the Kofagrigus. Mummy actually just makes your ability also Mummy. So yes. it doesn't switch anything. But um, Wandering Spirit switches the abilities. So yeah, that it's was funny cool. because... Yeah, the, the Crocodile actually attacked into the Renarigus and actually took it to Intimidate. And use it against the crocodile. <laughs> yeah, it was really neat. Yeah, well, the crocodile and and I mean also the the grim star on the other side. Yeah, grim star uh, too. Yeah, just in case it was getting off any more physical attacks. Yeah, no, that was really cool and uh, you know again really really good. Prep. Might have been an accident. <laughs> it might have been an accident. Yeah, but I I'll, I'll I'll throw him a bone here and just say oh that was great prep. He he knew the crocodile was going to attack into that slot. <laughs> yeah, of course. Why wouldn't it? And, and it's I funny because like dark type into the ghost type, so I mean, it makes sense. Well, it's funny because I've sometimes been like, "Ooh, I looked really good there," and I had no idea that was going to happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, like when he, when for example, when Kev switched in his Metagross, I was actually just attacking that slot, and then he switched, and I was like, "Oh no, <laughs> I'm like this poor guy." <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. um, just an example of that. You just look good and you didn't plan it. And sometimes you try to do something good and people think you don't look good in it. And meanwhile, there's reasoning behind yeah. it. So, uh, no, that was a really good match. Um, I'm, uh, I, I think Sfield will bounce back, no problem. Uh, watch out for Texas. He's looking for a playoffs, man. He, I think he, he really wanted that playoffs about last season and just came up short. Yep. And, um, yeah, so man, I think he's I'd fishing hate, for that. I'd hate to be this week two matchup. That's all I'm saying to say. Yeah, well, you your bounce back. We everyone has a bounce back week that lost. It's <laughs> time for a bounce back week for distortion That's zone. True. Time for a bounce back week for Los right. Angeles line dudes. Um, that should be our entire yeah. preview section. <laughs> hey, speaking one, of it's about time it. to build on your last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely sports center material. Um, next match, I'll let you take this one because I'm I need a break. I need to catch my breath. Uh, distortion zone <laughs> yes. versus the Dublin Adelmise. Dublin Adelmise, yes. It. Uh. Yeah, um, I mean, just like uh, similar to Texas, uh, Dublin dropped game one, um, actually got swept game one. Uh, 4 Distortion came out and just, just took over. Um, but Dublin, I mean, bounced right back um, in just the same way. Uh, got 2 3 wins to, to take the match. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I don't want to repeat too much more of what I said in the last one, but just being able to bounce back, especially after a 4-0 loss, I mean, that's just another level. That's hard. Of, of, of 
bouncing back. Yeah, that was when you get spanked game one. You're just like, <laughs> ah, what am I even doing here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but that was definitely a big. Uh, that was definitely a big uh, strategy adjustment by Lex. Um, you know, he you know he has uh, such a good trick room mode, but uh, held off in, in game two. Brought Tornadus. Um, that that really put in work throughout yeah. that game. Yeah. No one, I don't think anybody would have expected it. I, we didn't see the item on it, but I'm pretty sure it was Assault Vest. The amount of damage, yeah. sorry, the little amount of damage it was taking from that. I know Lapras doesn't Lapras. do a ton of damage. But, but still, a max, a max Residence did like what? Like, it did like 20%. 20%, it, yeah. It, it, it was nothing. I'm like, yeah, that's got to be AV. So uh, maybe he'll never tell. Who knows? He doesn't have to. <laughs> um, but yeah. uh, what, remember, remember, do you remember during that match when um, he max knuckled the Lapras? That's right. And it activated that his was... policy, and we we're like, "Oh my god, this is where he this wins!" And then immediately Gengar, Gengar. hazed. It's like, no! "Oh my gosh, that was brutal. <laughs> that was brutal to watch." Because I mean, it, it, it and you know, I mean, obviously it sucks for Shadow, but like it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't like a terrible mistake in the moment. Like obviously, it's when you look back, you're like, "Oh, that was like, why were you going?" There do may, that? there may have been a better play. I, don't, I actually don't remember. I have to go watch uh -huh. it again. I don't think he was hazing off any attack boost. Maybe there was one attack boost from like an ooze or something that it got, or a couple of speed boosts. But um, yeah, I, I forget exactly what it was. I... But, but Tornadus had a couple of boosts, and and he hadn't attacked into the Lapras with anything with a super effective hit yet. Yeah, and so and it was like the third turn of Dynamax. So at that point, you're, if you're Shadow, you're thinking, well, obviously he's staying away from my Lapras, so let me haze off his his boosts. Uh, and it just that happened to be the turn that <laughs> that Dublin so went into the Lapras. It was just it was just horrible timing. I mean, yeah, we all felt bad. I'm pretty sure yeah. his opponent felt bad too in the moment. So <laughs> it's like, oh god, because because um, I mean that was crucial too because the haze came off right before Lapras's attack, and Lapras would have killed the Tornadus that turn. Um, had the Tornadus got two. its its hit off. And yeah, <laughs> Tornadus got hits hit, and then. Yeah, then it hazed, and the, so it's, yeah. it was just oh, it's it's a pretty bad turn. It's just, but again, it, whose fault is it really? Um, an ally switch there would have been dope, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but predicting the max knuckle, but then maybe you don't want to haze in the uh, not ally switch. You want to take it. Um, but anyway, yeah, no, it was um, uh, it was a it was a typical uh, shadow game. It went three match. It went three three games, like I said, um, and man, they were very <sighs> hard fought. Very hard fought. That guy oh, makes yeah. stat recording a lot harder than it needs to be. I know. We should make like, him do his own stats because of all the games. Winning two, winning two or losing two. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> Just, uh, no, so, um, yeah, I think we should move on to the next one here. Uh, Los Angeles Lions versus Space City. Um, it was cool well, to see. the last one? What's that? I forgot it was the last one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Lightning's uh, first first match in the uh, in you know in the league. Um, space came out swinging though. Uh, there's a pankin, yeah. He got a pankin. Yeah, just, just took it to him one uh, one two zero overall. Uh, both games three zero three zero. Um, yeah, I mean there wasn't a whole lot to say about this match. Uh, I have a feeling. Like, I I kind of knew that this Metagross was just going to be enabled by that Finny, and the Finny didn't really yeah. come, but I, I it didn't come right. I don't think it came. I don't remember it. Be if it did, it did. It didn't come. Come I, like it, it might have came to the six. I don't think it came to any of the the, the four. Yeah, yeah. But I, I just, Metagross is just so strong, man. <laughs> yeah, Metagross, especially in in draft league where you know not everybody has counters for it. You're uh, not facing a Calyrex Shadow any week because no one grabbed it. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, uh. it's still nobody there in case anybody's looking for a really fast horse. Yeah, and if by Calyrex Shadow you mean Spectre, then yes, you're right, Jay. Oh um, yeah, that thing. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm thinking series ten. <laughs> That's right. Uh, no, I think uh, <laughs> I think um, you know Space City gave him uh, a not so warm welcome, and I'd, I'd, I'm really excited to see how how uh, Lightning bounces back from from that one. Um, <laughs> I'm he, out of he, here, guys. I'm, I'm excited. This. You know, he he's definitely very excited about. Uh, the league you know every match he was like they don't you know remind me when they're playing let me let me check it out so i can see i you know i can see him bouncing back just fine after this. yeah i think he'll be fine too i think uh like i mentioned earlier like people are still kind of getting used to their rosters and stuff like that and he actually made the most moves after his draft and i think i made a mention in the last podcast i'm not sure if 
if he didn't have the draft he wanted to have or he just saw things he liked and grabbed them. But um, sometimes when you have a draft strat and it goes really well and you make a bunch of changes, now you lose a lot of synergy or maybe you're unaware of synergy and things like that. So I don't know if um, if it was the amount of moves he made. Maybe he's just getting used to the team. Um, but I, I do believe there, there, there was one play that kind of raised my eyebrows a little bit. I think he Dynamaxed to sell a Stila when it had like 10% health. And it just died immediately. I was like, yeah, well, yeah, I'm like, okay, well, it's the first week. It is what it is, you know. Um, but yeah, like I think just space, you got to tip your cap to your opponent as well. Space just played so well. Talk about improvement. I think he's the most improved player since since season one. I don't think anyone's gotten better, as better as him. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I wasn't around back then, but Space has definitely has definitely climbed his way into premier premier league in this team, uh, premier team in this league, um, and and definitely someone to watch out for on your schedule. Well, and he didn't even have a horrible first season either. He just had he just didn't make the playoffs. I think he was three and five. You know, um, mm-hmm. so you know, like for example, we're talking about. Um, uh, what's it called Texas Land Sharks right now? How he's bouncing back and he just missed the playoffs. He had the exact same record as Space, so Space yeah. kind of missed, barely missed the playoffs in season one, and season two he he I think he scraped in to the playoffs, just just barely made it. Um, and then last season he was tied for first, basically, you know, um, like one of the, I think of the three teams tied six and two, and he did really well. So yeah, um, so yeah, watch out for him. And he drafted a really good team too. Really good so team. oh god. <laughs> Thank God I don't face him. It's a good thing I rigged it to not face him. That's this right. I don't think I face him either. So, yeah. Well, I rigged it for both of us because you're my friend. Right? <laughs> now we should rig the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like last friend week. reveal. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um, yep, so- hey, so that's pretty much it for week one. Uh, we mentioned a couple of things uh, from the week as well. Um, Mega Kangaskhan was dropped actually in in week two uh before week two starts um that was one thing that was a really random segue but um, that was one of the only notes we actually had um but let's uh let's actually go through the standings actually where are we at like what what how do we yeah i mean i think i mean the standings aren't exactly exciting after week one i mean half the teams are tied for first and half the teams are tied for last so um, surprise this is the playoffs (laughs) that's (laughs) the only way i'll make it (laughs) no obviously uh i mean um you know, space oh. and detour both had you know huge weeks. Um, so they're they're definitely the ones. They they have some some tiebreakers that are gonna be tough to contend with. Um, a couple other things, you know, a shadow getting that four zero win. So even though he did get a loss, oh, yeah. um, if it's he huge. if he does bounce back, he's gonna have that's gonna be really good for him from from a tiebreaking standpoint. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I and then, I mean, obviously, but those guys, right? Um, obviously, Linoons and myself, we need to we really. We have a very uphill, uphill battle to uh, to dig our dig ourselves out of here. So, I've only ever seen you in last twice. This is the second time, <laughs> and the first time I saw you in, everybody regretted it. So, yes, we'll see. But you have to lose the next two weeks, right, before right. you make yeah, your comeback and make the playoffs. Wait a second, I I smell something here for week three. <laughs> Just in case anybody doesn't know, doing. we're playing week three. <laughs> we're gonna do something special. Tune in next yeah. week. I don't know what we're gonna do. <laughs> We haven't figured it you out. Want, yet. Actually, Jay, do you want to play on cart? That'd be kind of fun. Uh, yeah. Do you have a capture card? Because I don't. I do. Maybe we should talk about that off air. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> anyway, we'll See what on. happens when I throw things at you? It's just like, hey, should we do this? Oh, this isn't in the script. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> By the way, if it didn't sound like it wasn't scripted, surprise, it's not. It's, yeah, it really isn't. <laughs> it's not. We, we got a couple of notes. That's about it. But, but that's yeah. why it's so great. That's why it's so great. Um, so just so everybody knows, like summary of the of the regular season standings as of week one, this is the highest all season you will ever see me. And this is the lowest all season you will ever see Cascade. So I certainly hope so. Well, actually, yeah, that's true. It literally can't get lower. So, but yes. You're right. There's no 17. I, I, I always love uh, the baseball joke where it's just like, hey, coach, how can we always bat me ninth? Well, son, because I can't bat you 10th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, just in case people don't know, baseball only has nine batting positions. So, yes, haha, haha. Explain anyway. the joke; it makes it funnier. Yes, it, when you have to explain it, it gets really funny. Um, week two, so hell of a week one. Um, 
just in conclusion, that was that was actually a lot of fun. I really enjoyed playing it. I was, you know, what's funny. I was I was talking last week how nervous I'm gonna be, and after the match, I was talking about how nervous I was. It's funny. I was nervous the day of, but when the match started, I wasn't. Nice. That's good. That I feel that's, that's really odd. Um, I feel like when you go in, you prepped, and I I saw the hair cross in team preview, and I was like, <gasps> and then I went, okay, let's. I I got a strategy. I've got the hair cross strats. Not strat, sorry, but the the counters and things like that. Yeah. Let's uh let's see what happens, right? Let's play myself out of uh out of a wet paper bag, they say, right? Um, <laughs> That's well, they usually say it negatively. You couldn't play yourself out of a wet paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> I flipped that. I flipped that. See what I did? You flipped it around. Nice. Week two, our first matchup we're going to talk about is just in case anybody hasn't really looked at who's playing each other. Uh, Seattle Sigilus versus Space City PC. Um, both teams won week one, so I always like to see it. Uh, at least someone's going to be one and one is going to drop. <laughs> so that's nice for the teams that win week two. Yes. Um, but um, I, they they both had such a good first week, man. Like it's yeah, they did. Uh, yeah. Metagross, I just I just want to see it. I want to see it. <laughs> well, Metagross, I'll tell you what Metagross doesn't want to see though is that uh, that Charizard. So I mean, well, we, we talk. Of we talk about Metagross and, and how there's not many things, especially in Draft League, that uh, it doesn't want to see. Uh, this Charizard is one of them. Going to be one of them. Um, so it'll be it'll be really interesting to see how both players uh, position themselves, uh, you know, position their harder hitting mons to to be in the right spot at the right time. Yeah, like the the thing about Venusaur too is it can it can do it can hit you really hard and it can also be a pain by putting you to sleep too. So I don't know I don't know what he's gonna do if he's gonna change the weather. I don't know if he's going to taunt. I don't know if he's gonna just set up the Misty Train and eliminate one of those one of those options. The only way of doing it is a weakness of Venusaur. So it, it's just it's a really interesting way. I'm curious to see what they both bring. I'm always curious to see what Seattle's gonna bring. Let's just say that. Yeah. Like we talk about Octo. <laughs> And Spider Phantom Troop is just like, man, I'm so excited to see what he's going to bring. Look at Seattle. Every week we're just like, <laughs> really? <laughs> we saw yeah. a nasty plot of Romatis, dude. <laughs> and the funny thing is, whenever we whenever we say that, he, I'm pretty sure he's taking the win. <laughs> yeah. Know? like Weakness like quality, we Dynamax and DD against me the last season. You know, nasty plot of Romatis. Both, both of those were like, really? And he got wins both of those weeks, so... He did so, yeah. So uh, try some stuff, guys. Like, it's, yes. a it's entertaining for us, gives us things to talk about in this freaking podcast. <laughs> there's not a lot. No, there's tons to talk about. Um, no, we this this has just been great. Like the strategies everyone's doing, everyone's getting better watching it. So I yeah. think it's just in the end, uh, try it, see if it works. If it doesn't, people won't use it. <laughs> right. If it works, ooh, I'm gonna bring it on the ladder, and that's the cool part is you can bring stuff on the ladder and see it work, and now you're having lots of fun. Go Pokemon. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Umbreon again. Umbreon week one just kind of did 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 a lot of work. I feel um, as last season and I mean Umbreon snarls really hurts that Venusaur Charizard. Um, yeah. I mean Umbreon. I mean I loved getting Umbreon in the sun. I mean when you can heal so much more health at the end of the turn. I um, didn't even realize that. Oh my god, Moonlight. Yeah, Moonlight does. It, it's funny because Umbreon's based on uh, you know the moon but when it's harsh sunlight umbreon thrives so uh yeah that could That's, that could be a counter in there as well is that wordplay you just did there jay moonlight heals in the sun extra yeah <laughs> yeah it, yeah i think so i don't it's know cool it was unintentional stuff. if it was <laughs> fun, fun words play with jays that's jays, right multiple jays <laughs> Uh, let's let's get mine over and done with. Um, Dublin <laughs> Delmise versus the Toronto Six. Uh, I, I, he is just a terrible team. It's just it's not even good. Um, it's 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 he not it's, 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 well. It's not quite as well. It's actually worse. I don't know which one's worse. They're they're equally crap. All of my opponents <laughs> are just yeah. have terrible teams, and I'm gonna he tell got, myself that until I beat them. Yes, he he got four would week one. Now he, he did may too. Or, just he, just he may or may not have. <laughs> to take W overall, but <laughs> he uh, won. Um, no, yes. all jokes aside, he has. Uh, he's just such a good player. We're talking about. I'm picking him. You picked him to win it all, right? I did. I, I did. Did something about that? <laughs> no, I think uh, I remember when the when we you know the schedule came out. I remember you were like, "Oh, I have to play Dublin." You know, I you know every time I I faced him, it it hasn't gone well. Time. And, 
I feel yeah, like we did faced like more. There was only one, but <laughs> no, I mean he did win that game uh, against you, so he he does he does have the lifetime percentage against you. I mean both of you guys also uh, won week one, so you know this is another match where somebody's coming out of the here undefeated. Yeah, um, and we both know who it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> we just keep doing that. Um, what is he has a really really good tricker mode, and I have a tricker mode. Um, is it going to be a big factor this week? I, I don't know. Like I, I've, I've kind of got an idea and stuff like that. Do you think it's going to be a big factor? Um, I think it will be. Uh, I think uh, if anything, that glacier pickup that you had, um, it almost looks like you were looking right at your week two game um, because without that glacier, I think uh, doubling it definitely doesn't look as you. good. Um, but that glacier definitely turns things around. Um, obviously, has a plus matchup against Mudsdale. Um, Unless it gets going too, I mean, I yeah, might I think bring it. <laughs> I, I might. No, but I mean, Hattering. I mean, Glacier doesn't super like to see Hattering either. So I think it goes both ways. Uh, you know, I think seeing some combination of of you with Glacier, Fungus, and Berserker in Trick Room versus Hattering, Mudsdale, and Delmise in, in you know his his mascot there in in Trick Room. I think I think Trick Room. Trick Room is going to be on everybody's mind throughout the whole match, whether or not it actually gets used and, and you know, whether or not... Well, that's the thing, right? Like, do you spec yeah. for Trick Room or do you spec for not Trick Room, right? Like, it's, right. you got to make that decision. It's just like, I need to outspeed at some point, but am I going to be one less or one more? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and obviously, I mean, Lex bounced back in, in week one using Tornadoes. So, um, you know, his plan might be something with Trick Room and it turns out, you know, you have the upper hand there, so... So what um, you're saying is lose game one. Yes, that's the strategy because when that's he win, when he loses when he loses game one, he wins. So I need to lose game one. That, that's I'm gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think I was gonna say I think this uh, this this matchup is gonna come down to. Um, I mean, you guys both have, you know, what regardless of the room. Um, I mean, Incineroar Klefki for him. I mean, it, you know, Klefki with. With Prankster, Incineroar is, just works in and out of Trick Room. You know, both of those mods work in and out. Um, and I think on on your side, Rotom, Meowstic are the same way. Um, so I think I think the mods that can that can work well in both modes, I think could be could be the difference makers in this matchup. For, well, for... Incin Klefki is definitely a little. It sounds a little sexier than Rotom Fan Meowstic. <laughs> it does. It does. I just realized that reading it, I'm just like. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't have that sexy pick, but I do have a glacier, a nice horse. So there's, there's that. So you got your Klefkians, and I got a nice horse. Um, you got another horse, but it's not as good. Um, <laughs> but let's go on to the next match. I don't know who's gonna win. Probably me, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, let, I'll see. let you talk about this one since uh, we just got done with yours. Let's talk about my match. <laughs> you know what? I think this is a week for Texas to build on his week one win, and you to bi to bounce back. <laughs> like, yeah, just say that for all jargon, of jargon, 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 jargon. Uh, no, man. Like I, I, looking at these two rosters, like you guys have so much offense. Like you've got P two, you've got Moltres, you've got uh, man. Like th there's just so much power on both sides. Like he's got the Alakazam. He's got um, obviously the Jigalogy just kind of went off last week he's got a cartana not to mention like yeah i i just see a lot of offense going back and forth like so like do you do you really bring support to this matchup or do you just <laughs> load up on offense and just go bah, 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 like rock em, suck em, robots yeah it's gonna be i mean i i have to imagine these 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 matches are gonna be relatively quick um uh, <laughs> because and it's oh god it's gonna be dude a, dublin just, versus me i think it's gonna be 12 or 15 turns yeah. Each game it's it's it, gonna suck <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's gonna be whoever's whoever's dynamax can beat the other team's dynamax is, is gonna be mine again in texas is probably and your dynamax versus my dynamax <laughs> <laughs> uh, dynamax sounds a little more aggressive than gigantamax now um yeah like I, i'm curious to see it. yo jay why don't you just upload your poke pace for week two in the in the comments here that way everybody yeah, sure can have not. a look at what you want to do you're you're assuming I've actually prepped for this match already. Well, hold on a second. <laughs> I'm not wrong when I say you didn't do that last week, and you lost. Yeah, I lost so I'm saying you should fair. do it this week. <laughs> <laughs> we always had this idea, guys. By the way, in doing prep, you nickname your Pokemon a move or an item they don't have. <laughs> 
Yes. So, like, you name your Moltres weakness policy. <laughs> it's got, like, life orb. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so freaking funny, but I don't know. Or, like, you name your Venusaur a snooze land or something like that, and it's just, like, you don't it even have, even sleep, have powder. sleep powder. Yeah, exactly. Also, yeah. Dynamaxes and hits you with max quake. Mm. Crap. So, the next match that we want to talk about as well is uh, Kev's Sapphire Salamence versus Vitor Sapphire Excadrills. Uh, this gives Sapphire a chance to bounce back from his week one loss, <laughs> and Sapphire Excadrills build a chance, uh, build on his week one win. Uh, that's the last time I'm going to say that, I promise. I wouldn't promise that if I were you, but uh, no, I think... I'm, um... I'm a compulsive liar, so... <laughs> <laughs> No, Vitor uh, made one of the or two actually of the oh my god of, he did free agent moves this week, um, and he got Reggie Alecki and pissed off a lot of people doing it too. Yeah, I think uh, that's one of the. I mean, it's, yeah, that's it, scary. It's a scary mon. Um, another one that was just absurd that it wasn't drafted and was out there still. Uh, yeah, well, no, there just are a couple of what he can do with that. Well, I I don't even want to think about it. I don't. I face in week four, and I'm expecting to see it at some point. But it's. But we were talking about Glacier being picked up, and I can't believe nobody grabbed this. And I think everyone like it's crazy. Everyone just let me grab it. Aleki, man, it survived the draft. It survived two free draft, uh, free agent picks before the season started. It survived week one, and it's like Vitz was like, okay, if no one else will get it. <laughs> like, yes, I'll grab it. <laughs> I'll grab it myself, and no. Oh, come on! That's not fit. Well, you had so many opportunities so many to grab it. Yeah. Um. No, I think it was a really good addition. Uh, Eliki's just such a pain. Uh, the one thing Eliki doesn't have going for it is his lack of coverage. If you want to use it offensively, so it's a very, this very good fair. support mon. Uh, blazingly fast, but um, offensively, um, it needs the right support to go off offensively. But hey, don't. Uh, don't count it out if it doesn't have the right support. This thing is Electro Ball. Oof. Well, yeah, and with, I mean, just with Transistor too. Like, if if you're not a ground type, you don't want to get hit by Alki. I mean, no. Like, even if you resist it, it's going to do a chunk to you. Yeah, surprise! <laughs> so, it's faster than you. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. only thing that's not taking damage from that is a Mudsdale. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, or but no, I think maybe. I think it'll be. Uh, I mean, it'll be. It'll be an interesting one to watch. I mean, Vitor rocking special T-Tower week one was and went off. I mean, five kills, no deaths. Um, he he wanted this thing. He wanted this thing round one, and it it's already it's already lived up to its round one hype. So, did I Man. sense a little bit of sourness in your voice when you said that? <laughs> I am glad that I don't have to face him again for a long time. <laughs> we'll just go with that. That's right. That's right. Till the finals, because it seems to be an annual thing. Um, That's right. Yeah, like Sapphire Salamence. I like. I, I know. Said like, um, uh, you know, joking around, saying, "Oh, if you lose, you bounce back in week two. No, like th this is one guy that like I feel like he he made a few mistakes in week one that I don't think he'll make again. Um, obviously we're all human, but I feel like he's definitely better than he showed up in in week one. I think I just like same thing with Vitor in week in season two. I had no business winning that match, <laughs> you know. Uh, Vitor is clearly the better player, but I, I think I just kind of caught him off guard or whatever it might be, or you know. So don't expect to, him not to bounce back um, without going with the cliches. But I think uh, Sapphire Salamence and uh, Kev's is uh, definitely going to bounce back. I think honestly, I want to see some more special offense on his team. I think one free agent move. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's in the S tier, the A tier, whatever it might be. Um, I think one free agent move could make his team just like ridiculously amazing. Because yeah. I feel like, yeah, his team could just kind of go off. It was really hard to prep for as it was, uh, let alone having like a, a crazy special attacker on his team. Uh, Should have grabbed Eliki, bro. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Should have had it. He was out there. He was um, out there. No. Yeah, so so I looking agree. forward to that one. Um, Ellie Linoons versus Spider Phantom Troop. Um L.A. Linoon's first week, um, oh, sorry, first season, so there's no history between him and, uh, and Octo. So uh, we're still finding out about this L.A. Linoon's character. Uh, I also don't think he, he's going to bring the same, you know, I'm not going to say effort, but he, he definitely gave an effort. But, like, I don't think we're going to see the same player next week. I don't think. What do you think? No, I think uh, I, he seems like uh, the kind of guy that can, that can build um, even on losses. So um, it would be really nice to see how he responds to that. Um, 
you know, some guys, some guys, they come in, they, they lose a, you know, a match or two and they just kind of fall apart and they're like, screw this league. And I don't want to be here. Um, no, that's not him. No, that doesn't. Like, I, I, th- that doesn't I threatened seem his like family. <laughs> <laughs> no, that doesn't. I was just like, dude, no. That doesn't seem like him at all. So I, I think I think a loss will just make him try that much Motivate harder. Motivate him. And, uh, yeah, uh, but a tough tough opponent to go up against week two um, in, in Octo and in Octo's team this year is just. Hey, I Octo mean, hasn't been haven't hasn't been blowing teams out lately like he usually does. You know that, that, that's that's one that's thing. Good. That like he fair. used to embarrass guys. Now he's just getting <laughs> wins. Maybe he's just getting smarter about it. It's just like I'm just gonna get my win and move on, and I'm not playing with my food anymore. That could be <laughs> it. But maybe everybody else is just getting a little bit better. That's another thing. Well, I mean, we I mean, we talked about it. We talked about it at the top of this this podcast too. I think this league in general is just getting more and more competitive, and I think everybody in this league is getting better. Um, and so there's you know. It's it's just getting to be where there's there's not too many points on the on the schedule. You're like, okay, that guy should definitely beat that guy. Um, yeah, and you don't know anymore. Just about every match is just like, man, I I don't even know who to pick here. <laughs> and I started doing that week season two, and I'm just like, I can't do that. Yeah. Can't do that again. Um, right. But yeah, like I I do think uh, L.A. Linus like. I think he he has a really nice team. Celestia is just such a monster pick, so I think just getting support around that Celestia can uh, can make a big problem for for anyone for that matter. Um, so is he going to be ready with the team that he has? I know he grabbed a bunch of guys, uh, a, a bunch of Pokemon and free agents and stuff like that. I think he's still kind of getting a feel for it. But um, yeah, I'm curious to kind of see what he gets. I'm going to be following him uh, definitely all season as everybody else. But uh, a new player, I'm definitely curious to see what they're going to bring. I want to see that Toxapex. Yes, I want to see it. Let's see if it can, I want to see if it can do something in, in doubles here. I think Let's it gets it. wide guard too, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> Toxic stall stuff and recover. Oh, and gosh. oh god, I don't think I'm facing him this <laughs> season. Am I? I should look really quick. Keep talking. I'm gonna see if I face I him. <laughs> I don't. I don't think I face him either. But uh, yeah, who knows? Um, yeah. No, I think it'll be. Uh, it'll be. It'll be definitely one that I'll be keeping my eye on um, for this week. I think. Uh, yeah, I want to see what kind of what kind of player he's going to be bouncing back there. So, um, by the best, uh, let's move on to the next matchup here: um, the Distortion Zone Zone versus yeah. Great Marsh Gastrodons. Um, yeah, I think uh, their their only their only match that they've had against each other was in season two when uh, yeah, Shadow took over count. Shadow took over for Yizzle's team, and the very first yeah. week was against Great Marsh. So, yeah, you got to fa- welcome to the league. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> So I mean, I mean it, technically it is a one zero in Great Marsh's favor, but I I don't even know if we should even count that. So nah, uh, like last week, like we had um, Kyogre versus Great Marsh last season. It was like they played once, but they really didn't care. Exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. So that's that's kind. Of, I think Distortion Zone or Shadow. He definitely wanted to to win that first week. His for everybody wants to win their first match, um, but you're going up against one of the best players in in our league's history. Yeah, we welcome to the league, right? Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I think uh, Shadow's gotten a lot better. Like he definitely, uh, we were saying last podcast and before the season that he's going to build on last season, um, and he's getting better and things like that. And I saw a really, really nice showing in week one yeah. for him. So I think Great Marsh, yeah, one in seven team from last season. <laughs> this ain't no one in seven team. <laughs> no, I don't think so either. And uh, I think uh, so. Just. Shadow made one of the other uh, free agent moves uh, this week, uh, grabbing oh, yeah. Slowbro and dropping Gengar. Um, I think I could definitely see it being plugged in. I mean, Great Marsh is, a, is is one of the teams that has good trick room mode, um, and uh, Slowbro definitely helps this Shadow um, possibly counter something in there as well. Um, so great, I think that's I think that's a great pickup, especially the week that he got it here. Well, yeah, the timing it was just really really good as well but uh and and you know what just uh, even like schedule aside i think his team definitely needed something like slow bro it did. Um, yep. gengar worked really really well um i think gengar is a great pokemon it does a lot of things um unfortunately sometimes if to get to make your team a little better you have to drop something slightly better than what you're picking up and uh, you can you can make an argument that it wasn't better and what he's getting is better or whatever it might be but i, I do believe that his team did need a slow uh, a slow mode involved and slow bro definitely accomplishes that for him and uh gives his opponent something to think about that's for sure yeah um no, can sure. you stop that gigalith 
<laughs> like Gimleth is it's so strong, man. Like Yeah. And I mean and Great Marsh has used it before. He knows he knows how, how to play well with it. And especially next to Statland. Um I mean just the fact that I in you know, in one of his, you know, Great Marsh's week uh games last week, um Stoutland did the the surf to to proc the Gigalith weakness policy and then I think the very next game Statland Dynamaxed. Yeah. So it's just like you don't know it could that combo can come at you in so many different ways. Um yeah, I think I think do. I think we over I think we definitely overlooked this. I know I did when thinking of uh best duos at the end of the year. Um uh, I could definitely see Gigalith Statland being towards the top of, of that list. You picked the wrong sand combo for your I pick, did. bud. <laughs> you didn't even use Excadrill, Excadrill week one, but I think we'll see it for sure uh, throughout the season. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think Shadow definitely has a shot for sure. Um, I think Great Marsh likes to grind out his wins, um, so uh, I'm 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 looking for looking forward to another game three. That's for sure. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was that was one thing I was gonna say. The odds of this one going to game three, I'd say, are very high. I think I think Great Marsh goes to a lot of game threes as well. He's from matches that i can remember um and obviously shadow just always goes to a game three so yeah <laughs> look yeah, look to we'll this one, good odds. one yeah pro line bets uh will this game do it go to a game three that's right i don't know <laughs> so i can run a league and go to jail awesome yay um so the next game uh like how are we doing for time we're doing all right everybody's still here right you guys still here no You're, I, I <laughs> said anything. maybe everybody left that's why i can't hear them that's right that's got to be it. Uh, Florida versus Signwood. Um, I liked what I saw from Signwood week one. Um, they had they have played before. Florida won uh, once before. They only met once. Um, very small sample size. Um, I like Florida. I again another. Well, actually, it wasn't that close. So that's actually the first time he's lost in a game three in this league. Or sorry, uh, lost in a game two. Sorry. Uh, Florida, you you saying? Yeah, he's never lost a, a best of three by two games before, so that uh, yeah, I just thought of that. Um, so I really <laughs> liked what I saw from Signwood. I think uh, I think he definitely has the potential to do really well in this league, and I saw it in game one. Uh, he took the loss though, but I feel like you know you got to tip your hat to your opponent and stuff like that too. But um, Florida, uh, Goth, I I think the key to his his success is bringing Gothitel. Um, I think Gothitel needs to come to every game. Um, you see, it's it's gonna die every game it as is, I want yeah. it to. I yeah. think it'll lead to wins. <laughs> and he he did get O2'd last week, that, and guess what? He, he didn't bring it. Didn't bring Gothitel. That is he, a clearly saying, a correlation. There. Not saying it was a direct result in him losing, but I think he should start <laughs> bringing it so it can die every time it hits the field for sure. No, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, slightly more serious note. Uh, Florida was the one that dropped uh, Mega Kangaskhan, so making a switch at his Mega position there, um, picking up Mega Altaria. So I will definitely be curious to see what plans he has for that, um, if it does come this week. And, see, uh, that sucks, though, because I wanted to see that Mega Kangaskhan. Go pick it up. It's out there for yeah. you. Bro, I have Mega Do <laughs> <laughs> you want to see it? Pick. <laughs> I do want to see it, but I want to see someone else use it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Like you hear that, guys? <laughs> yeah, like talk specs. Um, yeah, I think Mega Kangaskhan. We rated it kind of mid tier on the uh, on the Megas before the season started, and um, and yeah, I think that um, Altaria is a really nice pickup. Uh, getting that pixelate on uh, on your Mega is really really nice, um, yeah. and it, it's also a Tailwind setter too. So I think it actually gets faster when it yeah, Megas. Very bulky one at that too. So, well, yeah, like uh, it's if it doesn't have it's not four times weak to uh, to ice anymore once it megas, so that's pretty cool too. One of the downsides of Altaria, um, yeah, I'm curious to see what he does. I hope he brings it week two. I, I want to see all these megas, yeah. <laughs> mine for that matter. Here I am saying, everyone bring your megas, and I'm not bringing mine. <laughs> <laughs> everyone else bring your megas, and uh, I'll just sit it there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next match though, let's go into the, the actually the last match of last week one. two that we're gonna go over. Yeah, and it's going to be a good one, too, I think. Uh, Sveal of Ori Kalkos versus Kyogre Canucks. Um, in, uh, lifetime, Kyogre has the one win over Sveal uh, during the first round big of last year's playoffs. Yes, yeah. that, was, that was a very big win. Um, you know, both of these guys are, are you know, top-tier teams in the league over the last couple of years, and uh, they both took L's week one. So Yeah, neither of know, them should have. 
<laughs> not saying they should have won, but it just their matches, their teams and their matches, they were close. So like I, I feel yeah. like I they could be one and oh both of them, but unfortunately they're own one. So they could finish seven and one by the end of the season. But uh <laughs> so don't look at the records and say this match sucks. <laughs> yeah, no, this is uh yeah, this is both of these guys know that, that that they can they can do better and they can they can get wins and th- this this match means a lot a lot to both of them. Um, for sure, and neither one of these guys wants to follow him too. Um, well, yeah, that's you know, the thing, right? Like, does, but <laughs> well, we're talking about uh, the anomalies where you and Vitor in the past have finished zero two and zero three, dude. Zero two could meet a playoff miss, right? Because you, you really know, like what? Yeah, like I don't want to sit there and hype up every single game as possible, but man, zero two is a hard hole to climb out of when it's only yes. eight weeks. You know, um. I can't believe we're just mentioning this now. Um, but I think we have the teams that lost near the end of this. Like we got 0 and 1, 0 and 1, 0-1-0-1-1, 0-1-1-1-0, 0-1-1-1-0. So pretty much all the teams that lost week one are going in these last few, you know, kind of previews. Matches, so, right. yeah. But yeah, I just realized that, yeah, you're. I'm not saying you're fighting for playoff life, but yeah, you don't want to go one too, no. Well, that, I mean, you could be, you know, these guys could be going, you know, for tiebreakers at the end of the season with each other too. So, oh my um, God. Yeah. Not just, not just, you know, the, the need to know match win, but, you know, taking one convincingly would be, would put one of these guys in a huge spot. Yeah. Like I, and that's actually one, I'm glad you brought that up because um, tiebreakers are such a big part. Like, uh, for example, we were talking about uh, Space City finishing tied for first, but he finished like third. Um, but you know tiebreakers they they could have made him have a first seed right um right. so i think and, and so just a little bit of strategy involved for example in my game one uh game one versus kev's uh, this week actually or last week whatever um i actually was going to lose 2-0 um and i was basically going for my last attack and i was like well you know what i am going to switch out into my pokemon in the back with full health and you know what um yeah <laughs> Yes. No, it's yeah. preserving, preserving, you know, making sure, I mean, those tiebreakers are huge. I mean, every, every, I mean, pretty sure every season it's come down to, um, it's come, it's come down to, you know, who's in the playoffs it comes down to tiebreakers. Um, I mean, I think last season was a little weird because of the fiasco with Dublin and, uh, um, uh, and five cent and that whole situation. But um, yeah, that sucked. So, the you know the year before i mean i don't mean you were both four and four and i think there was like three or four four and four teams and one of them didn't make the playoffs and i think it was and it came down to tiebreakers so what you're saying is tiebreakers are massive yes 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 yes. quite massive um but let's uh let's kind of that's the last match we're going to preview um let's kind of get near the end of it uh of this podcast i know everyone's still here listening on the edge of their chairs um Let's do our regular. Uh, we're gonna continue with our pickums. Um, yes. So, just in case people don't know, uh, we pick one match. Uh, who we think uh, the opponent? Sorry, the team that is going to win their match. We can't pick the same team twice. Uh, for example, last week I picked Cascade to beat uh, Sopelo Exit Drills. He <laughs> did not win, Idiot. so I can't pick. <laughs> I can't pick him again. That's the thing. I can't pick Cascade this week because I've already picked him and I didn't get a point. And Cascade. I picked Last Seattle week. Sigilis, and uh, so I and did, he get, did a get a win. So took the one zero so lead on you. As there. of right now, Cascade is winning one nothing. Yes. The bittersweet part of losing to Vitor last week was the fact that I knew that I took the lead in Pickums. Well, I almost <laughs> picked myself. To, I almost picked my opponent to win just in case I lost week one. I'm like, well, at least I won the Pickums. <laughs> That's right. Um, no, so, but, uh, so, so, so my got, pick this week, this week. I'm I'm actually going to go for. Um, uh, I'm going to go for Spider Phantom Troop. I think he's going to win week two. Um, he's facing still a new opponent. I didn't really like the outing that LA Linoons had uh, with his team. I don't. I think he might need another week to kind of get the hang of it, so I'm going to pounce on that, um, which I hope Octo kind of does, actually, and gives me a point this week. Uh, I also think Octo is just... He just grinds people out and gets wins. Even if, even if they're 1-0s and 2-0s, yeah. I think he's just he's just going to grind out a win. So that, that would be my pick. No disrespect to the people I pick no. are going to lose. <laughs> just so everybody knows, I am picking based on statistics and reasoning. I hope you all win, all 16 of us. <laughs> right. There we go. I'm glad I said uh, that. 
<laughs> no, I guess I'll jump into my uh, my pick. I'm going to pick Vitor because obviously he's the best team in the league, and I mean the only. Well, he beat you, so he's clearly the best. <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> no, I just think uh, I mean, especially picking up Reggie Lucky, I think his team went from scary to like extremely scary. Um, Sapphire Salamence, uh, I think, has some you know he has some some team building that that he's still sorting out, um, and uh, I definitely think he has a bright future ahead of him. But I don't think uh, this isn't uh, this is an opponent you want to be facing right now in Vitor. And uh, I, just I see, see what you did. I see what you did there. Well, Vitor beat me, so he's clearly so... going to beat his next opponent. <laughs> and if Jay, you beat him, anyone can beat him. That's what you're trying to say. I didn't even put those together, but yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, that makes sense <laughs> now. <laughs> um, but let's just go to our last segment of the podcast, if everyone's still here. Um, we want to do actually a fun little uh, WPL Academy thing. We want to get don't want to get too far into it because we're kind of, we're not like over the edge, but we, we want to start cutting these a little shorter. So um, WPL Academy, um, most forgettable Pokemon mechanics, things that we like to forget in match. Um right. Either whether or not it's just mechanics that are like, oh, I forgot that happened, and oh my goodness, like we saw a couple this week. Uh, Jay, what are you? What do you usually struggle with, or not so much? What have you seen the most? Um, I think uh, type chart stuff. I mean, there's the type chart is so complicated, and uh, I mean, obviously some of them are easier, easy. You know, water beats fire, fire beats ice, things like that. Um, but there's mm -hmm. definitely a lot of things out there that people are like, oh, dude, I forgot that that resisted that, or that was weak to that. Um, oh, we I think, saw one this week, didn't we? And it uh, was like the the deciding factor in the match, too. Yeah, the and versus that, that, Marsh. that X scissor into, into Rotom. And I don't know if that was a forgotten thing, or if it was just trying to play the numbers and going with the 100% accurate move, but... Yeah. Um, I think ghost type in general, resisting bug and poison, um, are just ones that you never really think about. Um, bug is definitely something that it has a lot of things that resist it, but ghost isn't one that I typically think of. Well, it's um, a broken type, right? Everybody uses right. bugs, so let's make it worse. <laughs> oh my god, freaking game! Yeah, freak. I mean, speaking of no, resisting we... bug, I mean, fairy's another one. I mean, fairy's another one that <laughs> that it's is not a good enough type as it is. Yeah, fairy's fairy's already a broken type. Um, the fact that it was this bug is just an extra. It's just it doesn't it doesn't make you know like it's not obvious why that is. No. And so it's just one that you it typically forget. Yeah, the one I usually struggle with is uh, fighting resisting rock. I, I don't know if that's something everybody just knows, but for some reason I I don't know. You throw a rock at a person that's really strong, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> <laughs> like Pokemon yeah. logic. Uh, I mean, on, on the other side of that too, I think uh, the fact that rock doesn't resist bug is another one that I, I often forget um i just you know rock is super effective against bug but when bug hits rock it's neutral when you would think it wouldn't be yeah like i i don't understand that but <laughs> that, and this is why we forget things because it doesn't all make 100 percent sense right uh percent game freak, sense, logic. Percent. Game freak yeah. logic game freak logic hashtag start it it's <laughs> trending um mine i actually want to go with we also saw this week as well um prankster um, Prankster is one of the best abilities in the game by far, I actually think. I think it's one of the best ones. Mm -hmm. um, but it does have its downsides. So one of the downsides of using Prankster moves is Dark Types. Um, you definitely have to plan out your week against Dark Types. And even if they have one, you can still play around it, but they can also play around you. Um, right. And we also saw that with Incineroar on Whimsicott this week. Um, one, we, one was used by, ah, uh, you know, kind of hit yourself in the head and go no i forgot and then there was one defensively that he kind of knew something was happening and switched it in so that was Switch. really cool yes yeah psychic terrain um is another really big one as well i've seen so many times myself included when psychic terrain's up forgetting it's up and all <laughs> priority moves are not working to grounded working. pokemon which we'll mention in a second uh and of course the queenly majesty which is actually funny funny enough it's on shadow's team as well so he's got prankster yeah. and anti-prankster which is which is pretty dope. Um, no, but you mentioned uh, psychic terrain with uh, you know grounded Pokemon. Something else we saw this week was uh, using fake out on psychic terrain. And I say fake out, I mean just like prank. I mean, prank sure moves the same way. Yeah, um, you know, psychic moves, terrain. Yeah. Psychic terrain shuts down priority moves, but only if the target is grounded. So um, if they're if they're a flying type or levitate, which is the case we saw this week, um, they can still be affected by those priority moves. Um, you know, the, the fake out into the levitate bronze zone, um, 
you know, it worked. And a lot of times people are like, wait, what? How, I wasn't supposed to flinch there. And you're like, well, you're a flying duck. So. Yeah, learn the <laughs> you're, game. You're Get not. good. <laughs> right. Get good. Oh, man. Um, hey, we didn't pick a game of the week. Um, I will let you pick this game of the week because I think we're coming up to an end here. And I I run the league, man. So game do of something. The week. I, think, do uh, something. I, think, I think game of the week this week is going to be Seattle Sigilis versus Space City PC. I think... Um, both these guys, like you said, had commanding wins in, in, in week one. And I, I think both of them, I think, you know, we're, we're really worried about Charizard Venusaur. But, and then also Space City has one of the perennial top kill leaders in Metagross. I think I think it's going to be a, a dog fight. I think it's going to be a really fun one to watch. Well, who is going to build on their week one win, right, Jay? Huh? <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> We're both leaving. Thanks everybody for listening. Yes. Uh, I'm waving at nobody right now. No one can see me, but I'm still I'm waving, waving back anyway. at you. I'm waving at you, Jay. <laughs> bye, bye. Bye. Have a good day, everybody. Peace. It's the world Later. Pokemon League. Number one draft league you could ever see. Getting stronger, yeah, I'm building up my own team. Gotta be the champion, the one you can't defeat. It's the world Pokemon League. Number one draft league you could ever see. Getting stronger, yeah, I'm building up my own team. Gotta be the champion, the one you gotta be.